Hey folks, Fanning the Flames on the War in California, Part 4, Ecophagy by Design. That word was presented to me by my late great friend Bruce Hillier from ModernGnostic.com. Ecophagy means the house and it means to eat. It literally means to eat our own ecosystem. What but humanity takes apart their own life force that gives them food and gives them life? It's happening now, and it's happening in real time here in California. Of the war on California, and it's not just California, it's going to be across the United States and the whole world. This is what they talk about, the New World Order. It's the Old World Order just implementing their new plans. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here I just want to do a little heads up on PG&E, uh, pillage, greed, and extortion. And they're getting the blame game so they can all take this to the state. Just like I did in the previous video, part four, I'm showing and making the case that vaccinations, firearm control, uh, liberals versus uh, conservatives, uh, not funding the money, um, all of this is to drive it into making it all the state of Orwell. Everything's going to be controlled by the state as PG&E, Southern Gas and Electric, San Diego Gas and Electric are all going to be folded into the state. I'll bet you whatever money you want. All right, so I want to get into these pictures a little bit here. Here's the pg e logo. What is that? A laser coming down from the sky. What's the Fox News? A laser coming down from the sky. They're telling you what they're doing. And then this uh, newspaper here is pg e trying to destroy California. Note the number 13. And then the pg e messages together, building a better California. Public safety power shutoffs. Where's the power shutoffs? Anywhere they freaking want to, right? And then look at this base camps. We're going to get into this in a minute, but this is the base camp I just went by yesterday in Roner Park. It is massive. They're not going anywhere. All right, but up here in this corner, the players. This is the low-hanging fruit. These are the puppets, but they're making massive profits. Uh, this guy here, Bob Steele, he's the president of the board of directors of Redwood Credit Union that took in over $33 million from people after the Santa Rosa fires. Nobody's seen the money. They're loaning money to people at interest. They're not giving the money that people donated. Oh, and then up here, James Lee Witt. He was the former FEMA director under Clinton. He was appointed by this guy, Darius Anderson, to be the Rebuild North Bay just days after the fires in October 2017 in Santa Rosa. A newspaper guy. He owns the Press Democrat here. He's the founder of the Sonoma Media Group. Oh, by the way, he's also a PG&E lobbyist to control the messages. That's how they do it. So I just wanted to bring your attention to all this because it is part of pillage, greed, and extortion's overall plan. But we have to know who the players are and we have to know what the agenda is before we can take action ourselves to stop, to prevent, and to prepare. So check this out. I was just driving by uh, Ronert Park yesterday and uh, Clint had told me about the Ronert Park uh, pg &E camp, and I had looked for it, but I never really found it. And then I drove by, and I went, holy freaking shit. This thing is massive, and this has been in place since 2017. This article is from 2018, and it talks about the extraordinary wind events, extraordinary wind events that they created with microgeoengineering. They can microgeoengineer the, uh, the, the weather, folks. And here they show the telephone poles. It's all about the telephone poles because they're going to get rid of them and put on high altitude platform, beam down from space power. But I wanted to show you this here. Uh, work at a safe and determined place. But restoring power following the large scale fires required not only help from PG's own linemen, but also mutual aid partners. 24 mutual aid crews from Southern Cal Edison, San Diego, Roseville Electric, and Sacramento Municipi, among with other energy companies, jumped into action after PG requested assistance. The utility also called upon line contractors to provide both equipment and crews. One lineman traveled as far as Alaska, blah, blah, blah. And I want to get back to this Rohnert Park facility because this thing is just massive. And it's right off Highway 101 in Northern California by Santa Rosa, south of Santa Rosa, right next to Grayton Casino, which Darius Anderson, the pg e lobbyist and owner of the Press Democrat, helped found, helped build, and is part owner of. This is their claiming their lands. So Highway 101 is behind this picture. This is looking uh, to the north and to the west. But look at this facility, folks. 
Look at the massive development going on here. Look at all the five wheelers going on here. Look at the tents going on here. This thing is huge. Look at all the dirt they have over here, the facilities that are permanent, all the PG&E trucks everywhere. I saw, um, I saw over here all these trailers that are, are emergency trailers where they could take anywhere they wanted. I mean, look at all these semis and all the trucks they got going on over here as well. I mean, they're not planning on going anywhere. They're not planning on leaving. As they've said, this is going to be going on for the next 10 years. And this was a post I just did the other day. Forecasters, California fire season could last into December. Expect more large blazes. How do they know? They're creating the wind events. They're creating the fire events. It's all part of the Agenda 21, which I covered in Part 4. And here you can see a map they just put out. Significant wildland fire potential. Wildland. Get that? They're hitting the suburbs. They're hitting the urbans. They're not hitting PG&E down in uh, turning off the power in Silicon Valley or San Francisco. But look at California being targeted above normal. They're telling you what they're going to do. Fanning the flames of war, indeed. Um, this is a good video guy put together as well. Everybody needs to get this stuff out. And this is a, was sent to me, too. I wasn't quite aware because it was not being reported. But these are November 5th, 840 fires burning across the Western U.S. and not being reported. This is why we got we need our social media peeps, everybody in the Awakening Truthers, to share what they're seeing, where they live, and where they're at. Uh, and a big shout out to uh, Karen Scott up in Reading, who's been taking photographs of the skies up there and just really doing yeoman's work in recording and, and talking about what's happening up there on a regular basis to keep us informed. And all you others, you know who you are, who are helping out to share and spread the word as we become the watchers, as we become the witnesses, as we share with all, we're going to all know more because you're all participating in your awakening and your heads up and on a swivel. So thank you all for sharing. This was shared on my comment section and this how it lets everybody know. So thank you. And as I've been saying over and over again now, microgrids are the way of the future. They're selling it. They're telling us and it's going to happen. And this is what they look like, folks. But look at this article. This casino's microgrid might be the future of energy. Many of the casinos were still open. And here's the exact same article in a completely different news source. We have Wired and we have uh, Mother Jones. The exact same article. Sell it, sell it, sell it, baby. So as I've been saying, this has all been part of this plan to get PG&E and the other utility companies uh, moved into state ownership, uh, state of Orwell ownership. But look at this, the headquarters to Pacific Gas and Electric. You know, what is that thing coming out underneath that dam or whatever that is? Is that the hydropower? But look at the wolf on the wolf's door. Look at their logo, folks. They're telling you who they are about. But what I wanted to show you was this part here where even their companies are setting the table for uh, how they're going to take over and make it a state-owned. Now, remember, just uh, Newsom just announced he's going to get an energy czar. He appointed an energy czar. They already have the California Public Utilities Commission already in place, who has it on double secret probation from the 2010 San Bruno gas fires here. Uh, in the allegation of serious safety problems, uh, from the 2010 San Bruno uh, caused two people, thus violating the terms of its probation. A corporation is on double secret probation and nothing happens. pg and admits there's a real safety problem. Here we go. Southern Cal Edison and San Diego Gas have also faced lawsuits for their roles. 2.4 billion and 2,000 lawsuits. And the attorneys make all the money. So Craig Lewis has been articulating the potential reliability of dis distributed generation in his work as executive director of Clean Coalition. Central generation requires a highly vulnerable transmission line, and when you eliminate that, you increase your reliability and resilience. Agenda 21 language, folks, reliability and resilience. In addition to localizing generation, the uh, generation, the ability to disconnect portion of power goods can be a key, key advantage. Microgrids have been deployed for decades in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy in New York has deployed microgrids for hospitals and other projects. That's what they're selling. That's what they're doing. But take a look at this, folks. This is, <laughs> oh gosh, sometimes I do research and I wonder why this is why. 
So after I saw the, the headquarters for Pacific for for, for uh, Pillage Greed and Extortion headquarters uh, with the, with the logo there of, of of the wolf at the she at the wolf's door, um, I went into the building here, and this is a Tartarian building. Look at this structure. I don't have the date on it, but I can bet it's from the early 1900s at least. And this is the PG&E headquarters. Um, and I want you to take a look at this. Here's their entranceway. Right here's here's the elaborate, beautiful flooring entranceway to the PG&E uh, headquarters here. But check this out. Look what's on the roof, folks. Look what is on the roof. See what I'm seeing? It's Baphomet. It's the devil. It's right on the PG&E roof as you walk in. And what is this? The Eye of Horus. They're telling you what they're doing to us. They have it in the logos, and they've been planning for it for a very, very long time. And here we see right after the fires in paradise, PG&E crews set up in Nevada County to eliminate wildfire threats, set up a, quote, microsite set up by PG&E for vegetation management projects. They're base camping, folks. I mean, this site is another big site, not quite as big as Ronert Park and up in Paradise, but it's of quite size. And that's on the Auburn foothills going in the Sierras up to Lake Tahoe uh, on the North Shore, this area where they're talking about here. And here we see on the Mendo County Redwood Complex fire, they combined a bunch of fires to call it the largest fire in California today. Here's the Redwood Valley Cal Fire set up a large base camp uh, at the fairgrounds to house engines, equipment, and staff. But look at the tents. Look at all the employees. I mean, where are they getting everybody from? You know, they're bringing them from all over the country, but they all have PG&E trucks. Are you kidding me? There's a ton of white, unmarked utility trucks I'm seeing driving all over the place. This is a well-oiled operation, and they're well-planned to do the carry out what they're planning to do. And these base camps aren't just in Rohnert Park and near Santa Rosa, Satan's Rose. They're up in Redding. They're out in Lake County. They're up in uh, uh, Auburn. But the Early morning, everybody. This is Haley Watts, and I'm here on Old Oregon Trail Road in Redding. This is the base camp. So basically, uh, what this is, they set this up yesterday, and they have about 500 PG&E workers who are uh, stationed here and it's very similar to what we've been showing you what we usually show you about uh, fire camps how they have everybody who comes in this is where a lot of people stay overnight where they check in uh, where they get their food uh, and this is where all that equipment uh, that they need to replace and repair uh, damaged equipment that they have this is where it all gets shipped into always the cutie pie blonde but notice the numbers folks Notice the 66 and inverted 900, 666. They put the symbolism there for us to see, for those with eyes to see and ears to hear and those in the know. As again, you see here James Lee Witt using this hand gesture as well, the Illuminati hand gesture, Freemasons to show he's in the club there. And then also in the, the web crawlers, the 66 and 600 people, 666 and also in the weather reporting as well. And this was the fire, the rains that come right after the fires and you see paradise 6.66 inches. First one we noticed was the one up in Tuscan Golf Course, the former Tuscan Golf Course at Paradise. That was up weeks before. They even admit they were there weeks before. 2,600 employees. Paradise's town was only so it said to be 26, 27,000 people. That's 10% of the entire population. Before the campfire, before the campfire, we had our enhanced vegetation management project. And in mid-September, we established a base camp at the former golf course to accommodate the tree crews. Oh, really? And then the fires just happened to break out two months later on November 8th at the same time as we get into the one year anniversary of the fires. And let me show you a couple pictures as uh, Shelly, Michelle Lewis and I went through the base camp. It is massive up in paradise. This is 21st century warfare. They hit with the directed energy. Now they move in the troops.
Do you see that right over there, folks? This is sunset, five o'clock. I haven't heard you. But they're all turning off here. This is the massive site we just stopped at. Oh, there's where the guards wouldn't give their name. Wouldn't say where they're from. Fucking, excuse me, I know, I don't care. Are you fucking kidding me? Look at the tents over there. This is all PG&E for what? Clown of 20,000 people, are you kidding me? This was from a blogger. Uh, it's very hard to find the information on the Paradise PG&E micro good massive camp uh, that we documented, but this this is pretty good. So the campfire totally destroyed the town of Paradise. Santa Ana wins, yeah, right. Uh, PG&E set up its camp, old golf course, and we showed they were there before. Uh, same same deal. They were doing it for vegetation clearing. Here's the numbers: 33 sleeper units. You get that. Um, flew out to Sacramento December 3rd. The base camp was amazing. Look at this, folks. Look at how big these areas are that they've taken over. Again, the town of Paradise, 27,000 people, and they're putting in this kind of base camp? For what? For what? Look at the trucks. Look at the five-wheelers. Look at all they have in there. So he was part of this sleeper unit that comes in and helps set up, uh, I guess, sleeper unit camp so people have places to stay. For a town of 27,000? Are you kidding me? And they've made this into a permanent site. Um, there are 25 other employees, full-size refrigerator, microwave, TV dish, couches, chairs, back. Hey, it's luxury living, folks. Look at all the water. Yet the people aren't moving back. What are they doing? They're setting up camp for the elite. They're setting up the paradise that they've envisioned that they're reclaiming again. Thousands and thousands and thousands of workers, 2,500 workers, 10% of the entire, look at this dining room they have. I mean, are you kidding me? Lights and everything. They probably serve some uh, great uh, wines there, Cabernets and stuff, Opus Ones from the Rothschilds, soup and salad for lunch, pick your meal. Unbelievable what they're doing. Taking care of the employees, making sure they keep their mouths shut, doing what they have to do. They get a mobile laundry unit. Do they have this for the people? Do they have this for the people that got burned out of their homes? Boy, if you're not getting pissed with all this, folks, I don't know what it's going to take. IT trailer, technicians, and they all keep their mouth shut. They all go and do about their job because they're playing for the paychecks. And they all get taken care of, but the people don't. The people that lost their lives, the people that lost their children, the people that lost their homes, people that lost their pets. Oh, I got a book and thumbnail. Ouch. I mean, this is the stuff they're putting up. Anyway, I thank you for putting this up here, Mobile Sleeper Unit. I'm glad you guys are taking care of PG&E and all the elites so they can establish their new, their new uh, headquarters there up in Paradise. Unbelievable. And make, let's make sure to keep a track of what they're doing to us, the people who are just trying to get by in life. Thousands of Sonoma residents remain in the cold Thursday without natural gas to heat homes or cook, leaving them exposed to nighttime temperatures expected to drop below freezing. Tens of thousands of people without power. pg and &E, as I said in the previous video, had to go around and said they had to go turn on everybody's gas and make appointments, which is utter bullshit. I just had my heater replaced. I talked to a guy who's been in business for 20 years. I said, why do they have to turn on the, uh, turn on the, uh, the ignition lights for the natural gas? He goes, they don't. They're self-igniting. It's no big deal. Lies, folks, and pain and suffering. That's what they want. They want us to suffer. And remember the evacuations just a week and a half ago when they told 60,000 people ordered them to leave. Now, this was not a mandatory evacua evacuation. I don't think I talked to Fire Captain Matt. He says, no, they cannot make you mandatory leave. But people had to go because they had no other choices. And here all the greeting them, oh, thank you for allowing us back in our homes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Unbelievable. 
and for people like Meg, who's been helping me chronicle this and keeping uh, in touch through emails and whatnot, I live 10 months after the campfire. I already put this in the last video, but she can't move back. She's been trying to exist, get back into paradise. They're not letting them back in, folks. They're turning off the power, and then they have, guess where they have to go? They turn the pg e camp on for an hour, and they run down the hill. They go to pg e and get their water and charge their cell phones, and then they turn the power back off again. Five times within two-day minimum. They've shut them off for six weeks, had the power shut off five times. This is the future for everyone in California. This is the template they're using. We know the playbook. This is what they're doing. We're in the first inning. It's time to speak out now, even if you don't live in California, because it's coming your way. I guarantee you, folks. So much, Rob. After last night's city council meeting, Chico has decided to create a temporary warming shelter in town for displaced people who are trying to escape the freezing temperatures out there. KRCR News Channel 7's Trevor Fay went to the new warming center tonight. Shortly after it opened this evening, he joins us live from Depot Park in Chico with more on the story for us. Good evening, Trevor. Tamara, the city wants to make clear that this is not an emergency shelter. There are no beds, food, or any related services. This is simply meant as a way for people to escape the cold. We're still making some improvements. There'll be a floor in here tomorrow. We've got community members that from Safe Space who have rallied forth to um, lend assistance. The city estimates that about 50 people will be able to fit inside this tent comfortably. If more than 50 people arrive tonight, the city will put up a second tent tomorrow, allowing room for 100 people. Depot Park was chosen because of its central location, meaning people in Chico will not need transportation to get here. The warming center will be open from tonight at 6 p.m. until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. It starts today and runs through Monday. Reporting live in Chico, Trevor Fay, KRCR News, Channel 7. So wait a minute, the camp set up for just a few hundred after the event, yet they're telling us, CBS News, New York Times, all the USA Today, that 52,000 people evacuated the night of November, day of November 8th on the fires, and they only set up shelters for a few hundred people, and only during the night, then you're back on the streets. This is the story that doesn't make any sense that we have to keep keeping alive. Did these people perish? We have many recordings of people that went up there, uh, tow truck drivers I'll play in another next chapter, that were telling us. Even the towns, they're showing us that the town was maybe 26, 27,000. Where did the number 52,000 come from? Miguelia and Concow did not have nearly that number of people, but even on the Paradise sign, we're seeing 26,408. Listen to more propaganda and we'll break it down after. One year anniversary of the campfire just around the corner. People in Butte County are taking a look at the recovery progress. Tonight we went to a community update meeting at the Paradise Alliance Church. Reporter Trevor Fay joins us from our Chico Bureau with more for us. Good evening, Trevor. Good evening, Tamara. The people I spoke with tell me they're impressed with the recovery progress being made, and more than a few of them plan on moving back into their old communities. Oh, really? This is from the Chico, a local Chico newspaper next to Paradise forecast. Paradise repopulation to take a long time. Yeah, this was a forest fire, folks. Look at the trees here. Look at the buildings. Forest fire. We got to keep that story alive. It will take Paradise population a long time to get back to where it was. Uh, pro growth projections presented by the Butte County Association of Governments. The board said on Thursday, turn out to be, if it turns out to be correct. The draft report estimates population growth at three different rates for Butte County and unincorporated area to 2040. Only under the most re robust growth, Paradise reaches pre campfire population. They're saying 26,000 people. Uh, by 2040, Paradise will still be smaller than before under the two country ride growth rates. Hey, if I can do this, why can't these news services, quote unquote, the corporate news get this? I mean, unbelievable that they're spreading the lies like this, saying everybody's all hunky dory and happy. Unreal. This is Ken Bro. He's a campfire survivor from Paradise. He lost his home and his job to the fire. 
but with the help of his emotional support pigeon, he's working his way back. I plan to have the nursery going strong. Hopefully, uh, whatever it takes, I'm going to do. And um, I'm hoping to see within at least a year or two, get back into the business. Bro, like many others, came to the Paradise Alliance Church to hear about Butte County's recovery progress. A lot of work is being done within Butte County to bring it back to where it was before the fire. One of those projects is the Campfire Bulletin Board project in Megalia and Concow, designed to increase communication within the communities. Other work includes clearing the last of the debris and issuing more building permits. I'm looking forward to welcoming home more residents and more businesses, and then also welcoming new people into our town. All right, but before I show the rest of this clip, again, the number 52,000 or 27,000, uh, my friends tell me in the building department that over 9,000 permits have not been reapplied for to rebuild. People are not allowed to get back in there. The requirements are uh, destructive to them moving back in as well. But take a look at this clip right here, and this is the mayor, and look at how many people are attending the rebuild of Paradise. If you had lost your home, you'd be there. Look at how many people they had show up for this government-sponsored event. Bro was doing something special on the one-year anniversary of the campfire, a prayer walk in Paradise, and he's inviting everyone to come along. Bro's prayer walk will begin at, on Friday at 8 a.m. in front of the Welcome to Paradise sign. He says it should take about an hour and a half, and they'll be wrapping up by Elliott Road and Skyway. In Chico, Trevor Fay, KRCR News Channel 7, The North States News. Thank you. And I chronicled this sad story just weeks after the... Uh, Paradise fires from November 8, 2019. Look at the look on this guy's face. He's got his Paradise hat on. And this is the encampment. Uh, this isn't the one at the uh, Walmart that we went to. But three weeks later, and still no FEMA trailers available for the campfire. Three weeks after the fire, the most destructive thousands of residents surrounding communities are still living in shelters or tents or staying with friends. Many of the survivors are frustrated with few long-term solutions. He's been staying in a tent next to the empty Walmart in nearby Chico, which we now know is homeless were brought in there. There were homeless people in there. There were very few evacuees. That's why we questioned the numbers, how many people really got out. Gordon said he and other survivors need FEMA to set up trailers to temper their space. They should have set them up. They already preset units. So what is the problem with getting them here? They had the units. Said it's not that simple, said the agency at FEMA. They need to finalize locations for the trailers that are available, and it's unclear how long that will take. We just can't go ahead and put these mobile homes in any place, Garcia said. There's going to be a commercial site and put it there without looking at the infrastructure. We have to see if there's electricity, water, or sewer. Garcia says FEMA has more than 80 trailers ready to go that would barely begin to house more than the 2,000 people. They have hotel vouchers, but only good for 90 days. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, really? FEMA might bring 2,000 trailers to house campfire evacuees. Might. 80 FEMA trailers ready for campfire evacuees. But they can't find any place to put them. Where would they put them except this 50-acre FEMA camp there before the Paradise started? fire started at the Chico Airport, which Michelle Lewis and I documented. This thing is massive, and they can't find room for the trailers for the victims of Paradise? Look at these fifth-wheelers, folks. It's massive what they've got going on there. It's still there today. I went by there about a month ago. It's still there. Look at the tents and their fine dining rooms. And they can't find room for the victims. The Office of Emergency Services from California was there. The National Guard was there earlier than November 8th. Deborah Tavares got it on record. Here's that Ronert Park again, folks. And then rebuilding in Santa Rosa, they found benzene in the soil, which was affected all the home sales. They found the same benzene in the soil up, up, at, uh, up at Paradise as well. 
Do you see what's going on here? Look at all the water bottles. And then they also chronicled the hell treatment they did to the people at the Sonoma County Fairgrounds when the police came in the middle of the night on raining October 19th and evacuated everybody that the Red Cross designated to get out into the middle of the rain in the middle of the night and put them out on the streets, which increased the homeless population in Santa Rosa dramatically, which is still going on today. Oh, but they did build miniature stack and pack them so people had little shelters to live on so they could show they're doing something about it. But they're not going to rebuild. The cost of rebuilding is getting too expensive. Our debt is forcing all the foreign money that gives us debt to buy property here. So we're being bought out by the Chinese, yes, but with our debt. With our debt is how it's going. And they're trading cash for assets. That's what you do when you don't think the asset you're holding is going to be viable, which our debt is not going to be. And there's going to be fires, folks. It's going to continue. They tell us it's going to continue. you got to start preparing and not just with your water bottles. You have to start thinking ahead of what you will do, what you can do, what you should do. But right now, while we still have time, we need to speak out. We need to get our voices heard. We need to have our prayers for the ones, the victims that are not being accounted for, for the animals and for the children, the future of the children. The people in paradise, my heart still goes out to you. I still feel your energy from those victims who are in limbo and in, in not having any place to go because they have no closure. In the meanwhile, disaster capitalists like James Lee Witt, who owns a, a firm in Washington that profits from the disaster, is making massive bank. These are the people that are making money, but behind them, there's a religious order called the Jesuits, the men in black. They're all on the same team playing two sides in the fence. Get angry, get pissed, but get active. Don't be afraid to offend people anymore. Time is too short. Now they're coming out with the vegetation, the vegetation. Now we're going to have more fires going on from Weather Watch, blah, blah, blah. And then the Cal Fire map, they're coming in the fire danger zones, is exactly where they're hitting us. Talk about predictive programming. All right, that's all I got for now. Stay alert, stay awake, and be safe and be sane and love one another always. Show your heart, folks. It's a big time to show your heart.